Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. So today I thought we would have a go at doing something which is a little bit different. Don't do very many animals but um, I was inspired this morning by I don't know what. Um, must have dreamt about this last night I suppose. Um, inspired to paint a moose. Well when we used to live in Canada and we were living in Banff um, it wasn't unusual to actually see moose wandering down the high street. So, um, and we sort of got up close and intimate with quite a few of the wild animals of the um, Albertan scene um, from time to time, which was quite interesting. I must admit, I drew the line at cougars in the backyard and bears in the bin. But uh, anyway, a moose uh, walking down Banff High Street was always a sign for everyone to get out their cameras. And uh, yeah, I don't know, just thinking about the winter, Canada, the land of eternal winter, always springs to mind as far as I'm concerned. So here we are. This is my original sketch, well not my original sketch, the sketch that I did this morning, um, where I have, uh, this is what I try to do if I've got, if I'm doing a painting which is even remotely sensible, not something I do that often, but anyway, um, so I, I do the sketch and then I make notes. And I've made a few notes at the top here about the order in which I'm going to paint this. And I've put notes on the painting, on the drawing itself, of where I'm going to put the different colours. So um, we're going to be using uh, quinacridone gold, and I'm going to put that in the background, and I've indicated that here where I've written gold. And then we're going to put burnt umber or sepia in for some of the trees, and I'm also going to use that for the moose itself. And I've written down here reserve and that means I want to reserve that for the end and so on and so forth. So you might find this kind of thing helpful to uh, yourself when you do a sketch. Now if your drawing is um, even worse than mine then you might want to go to the website and you can download um, for free, no cost, the sketches that I do to work from and um, then you, you're, you've got a head start then and you can uh, get into the painting which is always the more interesting bit. Um, isn't it? So anyway, so that's where we started this morning. And I've started to do the drawing, or in fact I've done the drawing, because it's it's not the easiest one, I must say. The, uh, the moose has a very distinctive face with a very rounded sort of nose, and uh, you have a tendency, there is a tendency to turn him into some kind of cartoon character without really trying. And the arrangement of the horn, the antlers, on the head and the ears and everything is all very complicated. But um, so I've tried to capture that as best I can. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plunge into paint. Um, Quinacridone gold is the first thing I'm going to put in and I'm going to put that in a kind of light wash behind. And because it's going to be a light wash, I want it to be light. I don't know if you remember the other day we did some, um, some washes and I particularly mentioned that we wouldn't uh, add water because we wanted it to be fairly strong. Um, but if we do want it to be a light wash, which in this case we do, then uh, one way of making it spread out better is to uh, wet the paper first. Now I'm working on Etival, that's a Clairefontaine paper, 100% um, cellulose, carefully sized and made to be easier for beginners to paint on, easier than arches and the other expensive paints, I find, because you can lift it out and it's also uh, quite good because you can lift it out, you can therefore do the technique that, that we're going to do here. Now you notice I've painted around the antlers as best I can with water, not paint. Um, and now I'm just going to pick up some quinacridone gold. You could use um, raw sienna, or you could even use, I suppose, Naples yellow, or any other yellow if you wanted. 
Um, but you just want to glow. The idea is we want to glow in the background. So we want to glow behind the antlers. So we're just going to try and bring that down a little bit in between the points on his antlers. It doesn't have to be 100% uh, accurate because we're not designing a spaceship and a little bit of tolerance doesn't, uh, doesn't really matter. And we could add to that to make it a little bit warmer. We could add a little bit of um, burnt sienna and just kind of drop that in in the back there and we'll hope that that's going to spread nicely. Whoops. When that happens, you just pretend that's what you wanted to have. But actually, because as I said, this is good paper, you can you can lift it out. So we can just go back in and, and do that. It's not a problem. We want something in the whole of the background anyway. So, and it doesn't matter if we get a few back, back runs or anything like that, because it's not, a, it's not meant to be a perfect graduated wash. I think I'm going to put a little bit more in the background here. Now the idea here is that this is um, sort of glow in the sky and there's going to be some trees in front of that so we'll see how that works out but I'm just going to um, drop in some sort of vertical tree type lines in um, se uh, sepia and burnt sienna. And then I want to scratch out the trees. Kind of loose sort of style. You can use different thicknesses if you want. You have some thinner trees. You could use that for branches as well. Where you have a thinner cut on your IKEA card, whichever card you feel like using. Then once you've done that, you can, if you want, come back in with some more brown, brownish grey. We could pick up some. This is uh, Payne's grey. Pop a bit of that in to sort of go behind the trees, make them stand out a bit more. And then if you want, you can lift out some of the trees. It's another way of doing it. Same kind of thing as scraping out, but it's a little bit more complicated because you have to use a brush, a dry brush like that, and you just drag it down and lift out. So you can do that too. But you don't want to do too much because it starts to get a bit, what's the word? too complicated. So we let that dry and we'll see how that works out. And um, meantime, I'm going to do what we could, what we might call a, a variegated wash. 
Now a variegated wash is like a, anything else that's variegated. It's a mixture of colours and you just, for a variegated wash in watercolour, you're going to just pick up neat, not neat and tidy, just neat, uh, the paints, the colours that you're working with. So sepia, burnt sienna, um, Payne's grey and so on and I'm kind of painting around the rock there and then I want to do it between between the legs as well I guess probably sensible Can sharpen that up later and then we'll do the same over here This is the rock that we wanted to reserve. And then I'll wash out my brush and just allow that to kind of one sort of vignette sort of style. So we're going to let that wash out. And then before it dries quickly, just to increase the amount of texture, I'm just going to drop a little bit of salt into that variegated wash and let that do a little bit of texturizing. I'm just lifting out a little bit of the colour in the background there because uh, I want it to be just a little bit lighter as it goes towards the edges. And maybe a little bit there. Don't be afraid to take out some of the colour if you feel it's not quite right. That's the good thing about this paper, it tolerates that. And then when that's dry, I'm going to put in a few more sort of branches going sideways. But we can't really do that at the moment while it's wet. Um, yeah, there's salt on there too. You can see that. And now I'm just putting in a few shadows here into the uh, the rock in the foreground. More or less random. Let me just let that settle a bit. And then we have to wait for it to dry now, I'm afraid, because I can't paint the mousse without getting my hand involved. And uh, I don't want to touch the uh, variegated wash. So I'm just just noticing that I want to soften <clears throat> that edge there a little bit. Where it sort of disappears into the trees. You could say that the, the foreground, the background are a little bit, you might call, um, definitely loose, maybe semi-abstract you might say, but certainly not abstract, but semi. Loose is probably the best, best word for it.
much. If I get my rigger, I might be able to do some of these um, sideways branches that I want to put in into some of these trees. I don't want to look. I don't want it to look like a, a fossilized forest or a, a burnt wilderness. So you have to have some branches, and um, I think we'll probably drop in some spatter to do the some indication of leaves and things. Okay, so now, um, let me see, still rather wet. I'm going to try to paint the antlers and we've got it sort of semi, um, semi uh, silhouetted. So I've just picked up some sepia and it's quite diluted and I'm basically following my drawing lines to do that back antler. And then just dropping a little bit darker colour in. And then we have the one in the front, which we'll do a slightly different colour, maybe a little bit lighter. And then to do the actual uh, the right size brush. So I'm using now a size number nine. I think that's probably reasonable. I'm going to try to do this also with fairly loose colors. I'm going to hope that it works. So I'm going to drop a bit of sienna in the background there and then follow it up with some nice um, sepia, that's it.
If you mix burnt sienna with sepia, you do get quite a nice dark brown. Pop in his beard. And then what I'm going to do is uh, for the nose and everything, I'll lift out some of the lights because it's just a little bit tricky. So, and then this dark, we want dark here for the dark back, sorry, leg. And then I have to let that dry and let it move around a little bit. And then once that's dry, we can make any alterations we need to, to make sure that the legs stand out properly. to that shortly. Okay so the mousse is now pretty much dry and I'm quite happy with with what we've got so far. I just want to add a little bit of foliage in the distance around the trees. So I've got um, quinacridone gold here quite dilute with uh, a little bit of olive green mixed in and I'm going to use a number eight flat brush and I'm just going to lightly, very lightly, just break some of the um, some of the background here to just to indicate a little bit of there's not going to be much foliage left on the leaves on the trees um, at this time of year uh, where this moose lives it's all starting to just generally the leaves going to fall off soon but uh, so we just make that a little a little bit softer. Still the main feature is the trunks of the trees. And you can just sort of dance the, dance the brush over a little bit. And that of course will dry lighter. So what you're seeing now is not what's going to be there when it's fully dry. So don't imagine that, uh, that I've spoilt anything because it will be fine. And uh, I'm going to leave this as a kind of vignette arrangement here. It's come up quite, quite soft and quite nice and I've rubbed off the salt which has left me with a nice texture there and uh, so I'm not going to interfere with that I've left it kind of really natural the um, the actual mousse itself that just dried like that I'm not going to play around with it at all I'm just going to leave that as the texture of the fur because really it's more of a silhouette than anything else so we'll just leave it like that and then when we put a mount around it you get an idea of what the whole thing is going to look like when it's dry. And uh, maybe, possibly, perhaps, I might um, just emphasize these shadows just a little bit. Just a couple of strokes, but I want to leave that looking like, uh, like rock. And you might, perhaps, just darken that area there just a tad you see these little details that you might want to address when you put the mat on you can see things a bit more clearly once you've got it framed out and this I'm going to leave kind of vague as his feet kind of disappear into the into the foreground into the midground So that's the final painting. I hope you enjoyed watching me do that and I do hope you give it a try. If you did enjoy that, give me a like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, also don't forget to turn on notifications because that way you're here when a new video goes up and uh, you won't miss anything. And if you do want a little bit extra, don't, uh, 
Um, don't hesitate to join the channel um, from 2 dollars upwards. You can become a full member and you get lots of other goodies um, which you can find out about when you go to the channel homepage. And if you click on join, that'll give you all the information that you need about um, becoming a member of the channel. And also, of course, over on our website, dianeanton.com, you can download sketches of most of the paintings that I've done that need a sketch, including this one. Um, that will be up later today and uh, it'll be there for you free of charge, no cost involved. Also, we do have a shop on the channel now. So where you see shop indicated on the, on the channel homepage, you can click on that and see the items that we have for sale via spring. And also there's merchandise for sale as well on the website if you want to have a look at that. Plus on the website, there's a blog and the blog uh, lists and gives links to all the different um, materials, etc., that uh, that we use in making these videos. So hopefully all of that's useful and thank you very much if you've got this far and have listened right to the end. I do appreciate it. But for now, I shall say goodbye, everybody, and have a lovely evening. So bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.